Um, I think the first film resonated so much because it's such a beautiful, well-made, funny, hilarious adventure that has this deep meaning underneath it. And I think Pixar does that better than anybody. I think they know how to be entertaining and provocative, emotionally provocative, and those two things are really hard to do. So honestly, I think it was a success because Pixar made it. <laughs> and then, um, and the idea behind it was so interesting. I think people had never seen that on screen, the inside of a mind. And so I think that's why it was, it, it was such a big hit. Let me just add one more thing about why it was a hit. Two words, Pete Doctor, because he's a genius. Okay, so in the second film, um, Riley, our character, is turning 13. She is, um, you know, Joy kind of congratulates everyone for a job well done and thinks that their work is over, and then the puberty alarm rings and new emotions invade headquarters and take over and cause a lot of chaos. And those new emotions are embarrassment, envy, ennui, and anxiety. The other thing I think is so cool about the first movie and what you said about Pixar is Pixar I think is one of the last like a brand company names that people have generic faith in. Mm -hmm. Like they will go, I will go to the theater to see whatever they make. Um, and no matter what the storyline is, how the trailer makes you feel, I'm just like, oh, I trust. And I think that's really rare these days that people have that kind of trust in like a group of people who are making a lot of different kinds of art. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then my character, you know, I think that she is really well-intentioned. I think she really wants to improve Riley's life. And I, I imagine her kind of have been stuck in an office downstairs watching <laughs> Riley's life happen, you know, uh, without being able to really take any control for a long time. And like we all do when we see other people in positions of power, we think, oh, I could do that better. I could do that better. I could have handled that better. I could have done that better. And so sitting pent up, kind of stuck, this place, and then all of a sudden, puberty bell rings, and she's let loose, and it's like, you know, the the horse is running the hospital or whatever, and the the <laughs> the, the you're like, oh, now I'm in charge. Now I will show you how much better I can do. But like it happens to most of us when we all of a sudden step into a position of power that we've coveted and wanted and thought we could handle well. It's actually extremely difficult to be in a position of power, mm -hmm. and I think that this movie is anxiety figuring out that she can't do it better, at least not alone. Well, at first, Joy is excited that anxiety is here because she thinks another person that's got their eye on the prize. I like how the cut of her jib. And then she realizes very fast that anxiety is worrying about things that are in the future that aren't real yet. And she's kind of slowing things down and at worst making things frozen. So Joy gets relegated to um, a bottle. She's bottled up like the other emotions and kind of um, sent away, and her worst fear is realized, which is anxiety and envy and embarrassment and ennui are at the controls. I think that anxiety wants to help Riley and is really focused on what Riley wants, and Riley wants friends. Riley wants uh, to be on the team. Riley wants community. Riley wants to grow up. Riley wants independence. Riley wants, you know, and so anxiety's like, okay, I wanna get Riley what Riley wants. And in order to do that, I'm going to imagine all the ways in which Riley might not get what she wants. <laughs> um, you know, imagine all of these things that could go wrong and might go wrong to try to make sure that I get Riley what she wants. But what I think the kind of journey is, is that you, it's not about really getting what you want. It's about, are you trying to get what you want in a way that's also healthy for you? Mm. And I think that that's where... Like, if you're just too in the moment, too joy all the time, you might, like, just kind of bumble around and be like, oh, look at these pretty curtains, and like, oh, like, and I love you. Yeah. And, and it, so anxiety is, like, there to be like, no, 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 you've got you've to try to, you know, build for your future, but not at the expense of your present. But I think she's not the villain because th those are important things to, it's important to worry. And it's important to strive for a better future and to work on yourself. That, that's important. It's just none of us are good enough on our own. Like, it's I, one thing I love about making movies is if you go to see this movie, the list of credits of who has c come to work on this film mm. is so long. And a, it's such a collaborative art form. And it's such a human art form. And I think humanity is collaborative. We are no good on our own, and, um, and neither are our emotions. 
I think that a lot of people have a hard time trying to express how they feel. Sometimes it's easier to express how you feel through visual images, you know, um, like pictures in your mind. I think why, um, why this movie is so beautiful is it gives you a, a visual image of what is a very conceptual, esoteric feeling, which is feelings. So I think, I don't know, like, like the word important is an interesting word because when you're making something entertaining, you know, you don't sit down and go, I'm gonna make something really important. Um, but it is, it has become very beloved because I think it allows adults to talk to their inner child. I think it allows parents to talk to their kids. I think kids like it because it's funny and deep and they love the characters. And I think it allows yeah. kids to talk to their parents. 100%. In a different way That's too. right, yeah. So it's just like a way to connect. Wow, the filmmakers at Pixar are pretty amazing. Kelsey Mann directed Inside Out 2. He's a joy. He's incredible. He's so energetic and... Optimistic yes. and in love with actors and yeah. in love with the story. He, you can really see the scene playing on his eyes. You know, when, when we're doing this, we don't get to watch the movie and do the voice along with the movie, but he was the movie, to me at least. Like, yeah. he was performing it and... and and, and doing it, it was, I mean, it's incredible. I got to watch the movie and I'd never gotten to do a scene with you and I got to see the movie and be like, oh my God, I just did a scene with Amy Poehler, <laughs> holy smokes. But it really, I was doing scenes with him, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it was, he was amazing. Yeah. And so supportive. Um, really like catch more flies with honey or, you know, kind of style creator. Well, the recording booth, for those that haven't heard this yet, is like kind of a lonely place. You're there by yourself. You're doing your own process, your own work usually. You're not usually with any other cast member. And the great editors at Pixar kind of put, build your performance together. And you're reading with the director usually, and you have to kind of imagine the other side of the scene. And what's great is that you can go back and fix and redo stuff. You can noodle with stuff. You know, Pixar makes a ton of iterations of I think there was something like 10 drafts of the script and 12 drafts of the screenings and they tested and did it and reworked it. So, like, so you have a chance to go back. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a solitary experience in there.